Thomas's frosty friend. The winter holiday season is a very busy time on the island of Sodor. Percy has more mail to deliver. Gordon has more visitors aboard his express. And Thomas has very important jobs. One morning, Thomas had to go to Brendam Docks. I must pick up the logs for Farmer McCall, he puffed. Percy was waiting at the signal when Thomas arrived. He was very excited. Look what's over there, Thomas, peeped Percy. Thomas looked. The children were excited. I've never seen such a big snowman. Neither have I, tooted Thomas happily. The signal changed to green and Thomas steamed away. Suddenly, a strong gust of wind lifted the snowman off the ground, away from the children. The snowman was a snowman balloon. Thomas didn't see the guide ropes catch on his buffers and get caught there. And he didn't know the balloon was now following him. Thomas stopped at the level crossing. Suddenly, the children's snowman was there in front of him. Thomas didn't know a snowman could dance in the air. What are you doing here, Mr. Snowman? cried Thomas. Mr. Snowman said nothing. You must go back to the children, tooted Thomas. They'll be very sad without you. Thomas raced away from the crossing. If I puff fast, chuffed Thomas, Mr. Snowman will never be able to follow me. Thomas arrived at Brendam Docks. James was there delivering coal. Thomas, what are you doing with that snowman? He snorted. Oh, no! Suddenly, the snowman danced in front of Thomas again. Mr. Snowman, I told you to go back to the children. Why are you still following me? Thomas steamed off as quickly as he could. He hoped the snowman wouldn't follow him. Thomas, called James. Why do you have a giant balloon tied to your buffers? But Thomas didn't hear him. Farmer McCall was waiting on the platform. Thomas wished to a halt. Thomas, he exclaimed, what are you doing with that snowman? Oh no, tooted Thomas. Suddenly the snowman danced in front of Thomas again. Mr. Snowman, I told you to go back to the children. Why are you still following me? Farmer McCall didn't understand. And Thomas didn't know how to tell Farmer McCall about his frosty friend. Thomas steamed off as quickly as he could. He hoped the snowman wouldn't follow him. Thomas! called Farmer McCall. Why do you have a giant balloon tied to your buffers? But Thomas didn't hear him. Thomas had to stop at the signal at Maithwaite Station. Emily was picking up passengers. Emily could see the snowman bobbing about behind Thomas. Thomas, laughed Emily. What are you doing with that snowman? Suddenly, the snowman floated in front of Thomas again. Mr. Snowman, I told you to go back to the children, cried Thomas. Why are you still following me? Thomas steamed off as quickly as he could. He hoped the snowman wouldn't follow him. Thomas, whistled Emily. Why do you have a giant balloon tied to your buffers? But Thomas didn't hear her. He didn't know how to make Mr. Snowman go back to the children. Then he had an idea. 
I'll hide, puffed Thomas quietly. Thomas chuffed into a lonely siding. He couldn't see the snowman. I think Mr. Snowman has gone back to the children, Thomas tooted. Suddenly a gust of wind blew hard. Mr. Snowman danced in front of Thomas again. He was still following him. I must tell the Fat Controller what has happened, cried Thomas. I need his help. And Thomas raced off. Thomas puffed back into Maithwaite Station. Farmer McCall and the Fat Controller were there. Please, sir, peeped Thomas. I don't know what to do. I've tried to tell Mr. Snowman to go back to the children, but he has followed me everywhere. And he still is, laughed the Fat Controller. The Snowman is a balloon, Thomas, and he is caught on your buffers. He is following you because you are pulling him. A balloon, whistled Thomas. I thought snowmen were always made of snow. Thomas felt very happy. Now he could take Mr. Snowman back to the children. The children were delighted to see Thomas and Mr. Snowman. They cheered and cheered. And Thomas was very happy to have returned their frosty friend.